Am I wrong for refusing to pay for college for a child I have no legal obligation to anymore? Original post. For the sake of length, I'll try to stick to the facts and keep it brief. I legally have three children with my ex, 51, Adam, 23 male, Chris, 21 male, and Sophie, 18 female. Biologically, the first two children are mine, and youngest is the result of my wife's infidelity. I discovered this the day when Sophie was two years old and we had to rush Sophie to the emergency room. I filed for divorce two months later. I got 50-50 custody of my own children, but since Sophie was legally mine, I had to pay child support for her and was very bitter and resentful about it. I tried to fight it at first, but in the end, decided to suck it up to save myself the stress. But I made it very clear to my ex that outside of child support, I would take no other responsibility for the girl and would shut down any attempts at being her father. But I would make the effort to still be polite to Sophie. After some time, I learned to trust again and remarried a wonderful woman who made it very clear that she and her daughter were a package deal. I accepted this and did everything I could to try and be there for my stepdaughter Katie, 17 female. Aside from the typical ups and downs, I would say I managed to make a great family life for myself. We would have family nights, I attended most after school events, took my family on fun vacations and put my sons through school and paid for their apartments and cars. They're on their own for gas money. Chris is expected to graduate this coming summer, and I made a silly post on social media about how relieved I was going to be that I only had one more kid to put through school left. A couple of days later I got a message from my ex asking me to pay for Sophie's college expenses on my own, since the pandemic has made money tight. I asked her what she meant and referred to my post, and I reminded her that my legal obligation to Sophie ended the day she turned 18 and that I was talking about Katie. My ex was furious demanded to know why I was willing to pay for Katie and not Sophie, since neither of them are related to me. I countered by saying that I knew upfront Katie wasn't my biological child and agreed to care for her instead of being conned into doing it like I was for Sophie. After that, I got a call from Sophie asking what she did to make me hate her so much and to leave her feeling so excluded. I told her softly that I don't hate her and that nothing about this situation was her fault, but the simple truth is that it wasn't personal I'm just not her father. Since then, my sons have told me that Sophie was becoming really depressed. My ex is blaming me, but I don't see what I have to do with it. Am I wrong? Edit, just to be clear because I keep seeing the same questions. 1. The kids know why I divorced their mother. 2. My ex claims that Sophie was the result of a one-night stand and doesn't know who her father is, which is one of the reasons why I was kept on the hook for child support. 3. After I learned the truth, I was very angry and didn't think I could handle raising a child that I was tricked into caring for, so I decided to keep my distance. 4. Just because Sophie wasn't mine and I treated as such, doesn't mean that I was horrible to the girl. I also made sure that my children knew that what happened between their mother and me was not Sophie's fault, and they should never be mean to her. Info, did Sophie know you aren't her father? Yes. If Sophie has never had a relationship with you, then it's likely they just see you as a cash cow and are unhappy that she's turned 18 and the money is stopping. Everyone sucks here except Sophie. I feel bad for her. She didn't lie to you about not being your child, you ex-wife did. You said you countered the agreement about paying for Sophie's college and paying for your stepdaughters because you knew your stepdaughters wasn't yours and you accepted that responsibility. You accepted responsibility for Sophie in the eyes of the courts. You were taking your betrayal out on Sophie. You were horrible to the girl growing up. You made sure to make it well known that she was the result of an affair, and you could only be polite to her. You lost your daughter 16 years ago, are you prepared to lose your sons now? Check your divorce papers, you might be required to pay for Sophie's college according to the terms of your divorce. Also, your income will be included if Sophie goes for a student loan, grant, or scholarship, meaning that you could be potentially stopping her for getting her education because your income is too high. You are going to fill out paperwork so she can get herself through college. No, I checked and my lawyer double-checked. I'm under no legal obligation to pay for Sophie's college, because a percentage of the child support was supposed to be saved for college, but it was completely at her mother's discretion. I didn't think about how my income could affect if Sophie's ability to get a loan. I'll look into it. Nope, for federal student loans, FAFSA, a student with separated or divorced parents, only has to report the income of one parent. Sophie can use her mother's income on her FAFSA application and presumably get decent student loans, possibly grant money depending on how much her mom makes. Because I had 50-50 custody, I didn't have to pay child support for the boys. Also, my ex didn't contribute to our son's college in any way. I think that's why she tried to convince herself into thinking that I would pay for Sophie too. Hold up, 
She had a one night stand but doesn't know who the father is. How many one night stands did she have to have lost track of the father? My ex claims it was just the one time thing and she did it for the thrill of being with a random stranger she met at a bar. Now for the first update. Thank you to everyone for their kind words of support. A lot of you have suggested therapy and for the longest time I never felt like I needed it. But after everything new that's happened, I've decided that talking to a professional won't hurt. I thought I buried my anger and hurt toward my ex years ago, but now new information has been revealed, that's just making me angry all over again. Not too long after my initial fight with my ex, she and Sophie got into a fight that ended up so bad that Sophie was kicked out of the home. Sophie called her brothers and they in turn called me and she is currently staying with my wife, Katie, and I. Apparently, in spite of my efforts to maintain a boundary, my ex kept telling Sophie that if she was well behaved and did good in school, that I would think of her as a daughter again. It was my ex's way of getting Sophie to be obedient. When I made my post, Sophie thought that I was finally giving her the validation that my ex had always promised. And when I didn't, it was just chaos. Sophie called my ex horrible names and demanded to know who her bio dad is. My ex refused and told her if she was going to be disrespectful, she had to live elsewhere. Originally, some of you suggested that in spite of Sophie's blood type she could still be my daughter, and that was really starting to get to me. Now that Sophie was staying with me, I took some of her DNA and sent it off for testing and couldn't believe the results that I sent it again for a second time. To my shock, Sophie and I are indeed related. She's just not my daughter. Like I said, the bad feelings are all starting to come back to me again. But this new information is just putting me in a bad place again. I don't even know how or when to break the news to Sophie or how to even confront my ex about any of this. I feel like such a fool. I'm not saying that this is a good idea, a moral idea, or an ethical idea, but I wonder. If it came out that the wife was having an affair with a relative of OP, and that the relative had reason to know that they were the father, but kept quiet, could OP theoretically sue the bio father to be reimbursed for child support? Civilly, not in criminal court. Like, if it was a stranger, there would be no expectation that the bio dad would know that they were the father, but if it's someone close to OP, or it's a deadbeat relative of his without money, I would have checked into reimbursement and give the money to Sophie for college. I don't think I've ever wanted an update so badly before. I think she's his niece and the wife cheated on him with his brother. That's what it sounds like. Brother or cousin, or worse, dad. To my shock Sophie and I are indeed related, she's just not my daughter. So it wasn't a one night stand, just someone in OP's family. WTF. So, is he an uncle, sibling, cousin? This makes the mother even worse. She kicked her out of her house and she knew who the real father was all along, not letting the kid have a father. I'm glad OP divorced and did not stay. That woman is horrible. Last update. Did a second DNA test and whoever he is, he is genetically my cousin. Now for the last story. My, 44 male, wife, 41 female, lied about the paternity of our daughter. Just a roller coaster of emotions right now, and I do not know where to start. For the past 8 years, I had believed my 8 year old daughter was mine biologically. Now my entire world is crashing down because two tests confirm that she is not mine. My wife and I have been married for 7 years, and she got pregnant when we were engaged. I was so madly in love with her, and when she told me she was pregnant, I never in a million years would have thought to question the paternity of the child. Of course it was mine, and I was going to marry this woman and raise however many kids we had together, in the sort of happy family that neither my wife nor I had growing up. However after our daughter was born, it seemed like nothing about our lives were ever good enough. She quit her job in public relations without telling me, bounced around between various part-time roles, most of which she ended up having some sort of drama in, and stormed out of. Now she is running a business where she buys discount stuff and attempts to sell them for a higher price online, which brings in at most a few hundred each month. Around year 5 of our marriage, she went from never wanting intimacy to needling me about the possibility of an open marriage. I really felt uncomfortable with how she didn't seem to care about any ground rules and said I could sleep with whoever I wanted as long as I never brought them to our house and never spent any money on them beyond paying for dinner. She later backtracked and said that it was just her late 30s early 40s hormones making her go crazy. However, the subsequent borderline dead bedroom and her actions made me constantly suspicious that something was going on. In these past few months, things got really bad really quickly. I came home one day to find her in our bed crying. She said that she was just very emotional. Thus began a two-month period where I took on all the childcare so that my wife could go see a therapist and just be by herself as she requested. 
Her therapist put her on antidepressants, but she ended up self-medicating with alcohol, and we had fights because I hated smoking and she picked up her old smoking habit from her 20s. Then one night I seemed to trigger a massive avalanche of rage from her, when I asked her if she could please engage more with our daughter when she was talking about her day. She flipped out and started screaming about how much she regrets this life and regrets marrying me, that I annoy her more than she can put into words. She then said, there is someone else. I know you already suspected, so good job. I felt like the wind was being knocked out of me. She then burst into tears and said she was dying from a broken heart and all doctors will do is put her on antidepressants. That the world never gives her solutions, allows her an ending of her choosing in this life. She then says to me that my daughter isn't mine. She is her ex's and that she has the paternity test to prove it. I knew immediately which ex she was talking about. It was her ex 42 male from 13 years ago, who was in an on again off again relationship with somebody. He kept dumping her when he and his girlfriend became on again. He has now been married for two years to a 26 year old, but obviously his ways of never being able to decide between women has never stopped. I am obviously having my world crumble before my eyes, so we start the worst argument of our marriage. I for several minutes forgot that our daughter could easily walk in on the both of us, even though she was thankfully outside and occupied at the time. My wife at this point is already pretty drunk and angrily finishes up the rest of her bottle. She says that she loves him, she loves him but she is lower than trash to him. She showed me the paternity test results on her phone that she and him both saw and afterwards he said she's been playing him the whole time and ghosted her. She says she hates him for being such a cruel human and that she just wanted to curl up and disappear, but she cannot stand me either. Not only was she cheating on me with him while we were dating, but after he started making business trips back to the area two years ago, they reconnected and that was the reason she asked for an open marriage. I told her that I put up with all her problems. I told myself that she was just trying to get over the trauma from a tough childhood or that it was her professional struggles giving her depression, but she has been spitefully betraying me. I told her that I was done. I ended up leaving the house and going to a motel and just staring at the ceiling for like an entire day. I even forgot to call in sick for work and that never happens and a friend at work called to check on me. After I told him what happened, he told me I needed to clear my head enough to get ahead of this situation and all the drama ahead. I ended up going to see a lawyer. It was then my wife started bombarding my messages with texts, saying she is sorry that she is selfish but she couldn't help who she fell in love with. She asked me to come home and to still love our daughter. I replied, I did love our daughter and can wake up every morning and call her my daughter but that I could no longer call her my wife. She told me that she was going to check herself into a psych hospital if I filed for divorce right now and asked for one last chance. I told her that if she wanted to go to a hospital because she was feeling so many emotions, I support her but she cannot emotionally blackmail me with this. She then tells me she dropped our daughter off with her sister and I immediately feel guilty about leaving our daughter like this. I end up heading to our house and find out she is gone. I go to pick up my daughter from her aunt's house to bring her back home while people try to locate my wife. Hours go by where there is no answer from her and she seems to have turned her phone off. I cannot help it. I worry and a part of me that cares for her started giving the rest of me so much agony. Finally, I find out bystanders witnessed her drinking and acting erratically in public. Police were called and she started saying that I was going to divorce her and her family was gone now. She told police she was on antidepressants and suffered from anxiety. The police decide to take her to the hospital and she is now in the psych ward. Hearing her voice on the phone there that she called me with made my heart break. After the phone call, where she sounded so helpless and sad, I broke down and cried. I only stopped because I knew my daughter could hear. The next morning, I realized that I needed to give my daughter some stability. However, I also knew I had to do this and I ended up collecting the materials I needed for another DNA test because I needed to know for sure that she was biologically not mine. I simply didn't trust anything that came from my wife and kept thinking she had another motive or something for saying my daughter wasn't mine. Today I got the results of the test and my daughter indeed isn't mine. I can no longer cling on to that remaining shred of denial and now I'm at a loss. The place my wife is in allows two hour visits and I went to see her. She looked again so helpless and lost. Part of her treatment is to make amends and I can't help but be afraid of her reaction if I really go through with filing for divorce. I know that she will be released and probably sooner than later and her demons will still be there. What do I do? I had a plan carved out but that was done during the anger phase of me finding out. I combed through her electronic records and found out the contact information for her affair partner. I feel that I need to have a conversation with him since paternity is a legal matter. I also do not know how much I should tell my daughter about this whole thing. 
I've only told her that her mom is sick and is getting better with help. Now for the top advice. Tell her your marriage is over. She has support where she is. They will make sure she is okay. As far as your daughter goes, you should discuss that with an attorney because legally you are the dad. Good luck to all three of you. He is not only legally her dad, he is her dad in every way that counts. Daddying is made up of changing diapers, getting up for night feedings, playing and bonding with your child, and raising them, not busting a nut and supplying a sperm. OP, your marriage is over. Your soon-to-be ex has made your life hell for years now and just used you for stability because the other guy rejects her. Don't allow this to continue. Talk to your lawyer if there is any way to get full custody of your daughter since the mother is completely unstable and doesn't even have a job or a home and if there is a way you can make the sperm donor pay child support. The dad is a human too. His emotions and feelings are valid. He's allowed to be conflicted or not be a dad anymore. One of my coworkers was a dad to a child which wasn't his. He paid for the child because legally he had to. But his own mental health was worth more to him than raising the child, and he decided for his own mental health that he would not raise the child anymore but support it, because seeing her would remind him of the wife's affair every time. And that's okay. Society shouldn't force men to be fathers to children that aren't theirs. Yet here we are. Financially, guys are responsible for children that aren't theirs in many cases. That's the sad reality for men, which is why I encourage my son to take birth control into his own hands and be responsible for his own actions. The courts have no issue at all with making a man pay for a kid that isn't even his. And not even punishing a woman for lying about it.